Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Blasphemous, this time with commentary. Um, there's very little left in the game. So I decided that I would go into commentary and share my thoughts. Um, I did a little grinding off screen, and I learned something that I don't know if I would have been able to figure out. I'll show you though. Um, I found and used another Bilary flask. I think I did something for this guy too. Or maybe I'm out of stuff to do for him. And I'm gonna donate 10,000 to this. Because I know that it does something. I just don't know what. I haven't found all the shrines yet, but I will go look for them once I get to the next area. I have a feeling I'm barreling towards the final boss. Sorry, I'm trying to get it exactly at 10,000. I usually try to uh, stay away from gods on my first playthroughs. If I'm LPing it, I often use guides more because I just want to, you know, I'm showing the game, so I feel like it's up to me to give an experience adequate. Do I have something for you? The miracle has been merciful as long. Take this. Oh. I'll be right back. Um, yeah, usually I try to show the whole game if I can. Unless there's just stuff that, like, is sort of missed in a playthrough. Like, sometimes I just won't get the bad ending, and if I only do one playthrough of a game, then that's it. And that's just a function of the game being itself. Was this here before? It must have been. Yeah, so I have all the moves. I'm missing very little. I think I'm missing one Bile Flask. Um, I upgraded some of them at Nascimento. I was initially hesitant about it, but it actually is a pretty good deal. Because one upgraded flask will heal more than two by itself. And the five end up, like, you get more for five max upgraded ones than you get for ten normal ones. I got these things. So, yeah, I'm missing one Bilary Flask and one of the other secrets. Um... I think the secret in question is either in, where is it? Yeah, it's either the area in Desecrated Cistern I couldn't get to. Because somewhere in Desecrated Cistern there's a thing you can't jump to because you're missing the ability that lets you ignore water. And I don't know what that is. I assume it's a relic of some kind, but it could be a rosary bead. So yeah, this is the thing that I discovered. These take damage. And what's more, they die. And in their wake, that is left on the ground. So this destroys your ability to regain guilt. Or to absolve guilt, rather. However, um... I've never really had too many times where I just decided that I was going to leave some guilt. So, it's not too big a deal. Oh, I think I'm also missing one health upgrade. 
The issue is, is that on the map, there's no place to find things where there were collectibles. So when I'm looking at a checklist of like, here's 30 collectibles, it's like, well, which one of these do I have? So yeah, all of, uh, whenever you break a statue, it sends you to a modified version of this area. The floors will sometimes be different and the amount of platforms will be different. But other than that, they're all the same. They have the same woman crying gold back there. Gold is a big important part of this game's theming as well. If you haven't noticed. Those pits are still instant death. I really love that lightning ability. Of all of the bosses, I think that guy might be the hardest. He's just such a problem, you know? Like, that is... In the same way that Bloodborne players will fear someone like Gascoin, that's too early of a heal. Wasted. In the same way Bloodborne players will fear, like, Gascoin. I fear that guy. I mean, Gascoin's pretty early. But, like, he's not necessarily a problem. But if your parry timing is not completely on point... Sorry for all the... I don't have a pop filter. Well, I have one, but it's not a good one. Hey, that's all of them. I got the achievement. And Custodia of Sin. All elemental damage. That's pretty good. Uh, that one. So yeah, they're not really hard. I only died on one of them, and it was because... Uh, it was because there were two big spike platforms at either side of the stage. Sorry, I'm just looking through here. Don't mind me. But yes, there were two large spike platforms at either side of the stage. And there were also the large bell enemies. And they knocked me off uh, a couple of times. Twice, I think. So yeah, that was the only one I died on. Um, they're not too difficult. They're almost made that you can go and do them in, like, one run of an area. Ah, the wind. I don't know why I'm going this way, because I should pause it and go look for the last health upgrade. Because I believe I am only missing one. Hey, so I just went in this room. Yeah, I missed this. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Oh, that's red. Oh, and it tracks to you. But yeah, it's on the opposite side of this elevator. I just missed it the whole time. I've never gone in there. I don't know why. But uh, that was one of the things I was missing, so... Um Good. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll just leave it on. So I, I googled how to get one of the last things. Uh, you must unequip some of your rosary beads. And then equip all the tootsies. Fourth toe of limestone, big toe of limestone, and little toe of limestone. And then with all of those in tow, haha, you go to Mother of Mothers, which is north of here. Well, up of here. Pardon me, Goostlins. Please. I don't know why they, like, do that. I don't understand how the ghosts work. I think their design is fantastic, though, and I believe that, like, their lore of, like, ghosts who are still seeking knowledge is awesome. So 
so it's in here somewhere, I believe. The knot of the three were he placed up, he prayed it made every No, no, it's where it must be where Rendetto is. Sorry, didn't mean to talk to you. Which means I go up. I don't know why that dude's so big. Dio Gracius. Subtle name, by the way. It means thanks to God. Like Dio and Gracias. People have heard my bad uh, Spanish accent. Of the Romance languages, I know very little about Spanish. I know more about Latin, French, and Italian. Yeah, see that thing, that attack they hit me with, that was why I died on one of the challenge rooms. I think those challenge rooms are great. I kind of wish there were more of them. They're really cool. And then we're going up from here. There we go. I love how good that dash is. Oh, right, I unequipped my thing. Like, I'm a DMC fan, so Lord knows that a good stinger is always good in my book. But goddamn, is that a good stinger? I can't believe that I've been going through the game without Mea Culpa as ascended as it could have been. <laughs> it feels so stupid. Hey, all right, cool. They sure do, Rendetto. Nail uprooted from dirt. Those sins are mine. Did he go in here when I wasn't? Hey, all right. I feel glad that he's dead. Not because, like, I hated him, but, like, I'm happy that he followed his path to its natural conclusion. So I've also learned that I've ruined every side quest in the game. Just because of the construction of the side quests, they're required to be done at specific times in addition to having specific requirements. So like, because I didn't give a guy some stuff before I fought a boss and waited until afterwards, I messed up the side quest. Or I didn't do it as good as it possibly could have been. Top off, why not? All right, where am I heading? I guess down. The way this game connects is pretty good. Because these all could have been areas that just go off in their own direction, willy and nilly. But they aren't. Um, like, they could have had these mirrors just everywhere, you know? I think Gravis Ascends is the best way. I didn't go to Gravis Ascends, did I? Oopsie dipsy. There we go. And then I've just got to work my way through this area. This isn't the fastest way. Now I realize. But I can just go to the shortcut in here.
Oh yeah, I really like this. The stinger is now strong enough to kill them in one hit. And it was always strong enough to kill them in one hit. For those unaware, I call that move Stinger because that's the name of the move equivalent in Devil May Cry. It's been there since the first game and it's the best. Those things have a lot of toughness. Because originally it was four hits to kill them and now I've upgraded the sword like crazy. And it's only gone down to three hits. Blood Perpetuated in Sand is such a cool name for an item. Ooh, that makes my balls ache. I don't have an empty. No, okay. And then I think I have goodies for uh, the guy in the salt pool as well. I don't have to kill these things, but I like doing so. Ooh. Damn. This game is actually so good I bought it twice. Um, when I like started playing it and I really was like, okay, this game is really good. I actually bought my friend a copy because he didn't own one. Also because he had bought me a copy of Omori, so I owed him. Not for any reason had he bought me a copy of Omori as well. He just played it because it recently came out. We were both really interested in the Kickstarter when that came out in like 2016 or 17. And so he just bought me a copy on Steam and thanks man but I can't allow that to persist. Right. Yeah, the only thing that I would really want for this game is a thing that shows you where you've been and where collectibles are after you see them. Like all collectibles, because there's no marker on the map for that little thing right there. And I don't know how to get it. Wait, yes I do. Or do I? Wait, yes I do. Damn. All right, so I dropped down on the wrong side. We all make mistakes. This game's sound design is fantastic, by the way. I just really want to shout it out. Because, like, the music, I believe, I, I have heard someone say it is all based on, um, like, folklore. It's all tunes from Spanish folklore. Nice. And that makes sense to me, but also... Um, Oh, there we go. Didn't actually have it on. Hup. Don't fuck with me, Brambles, please. What? Oh, shit, I heard about this thing. So you have to go to all these places and kill one of these things without using a teleport door. You have to walk there and do it. Which seems a little unreasonable. And I will do off screen. 
but it's how you unlock the final mea culpa shrine. The first is easy, it's one of the Minotaur men. The other ones are less so. I believe one of them is in... Oh, crap. Oh yeah, you also can't die. Now granted, my health and strength have all improved since those areas, and I think the only thing left for me is the last area of the game. Oh, that reminds me, I can put that nail on now. Oh, that feels really good. That double reminds me, I can also take off all these fucking toes. Look, man. The toes are nice. But dude, dude, it's a little much. I think it's down here. Oh, wow, that's one swing now. That feels good. I love when you finally hit a threshold of damage and you can kill things in one swing. That feels so good. Like that. I love that stuff. Okay, so this will be an area that becomes unlocked. Oh, and that probably shortcuts back to the room with a chalice in it. Yeah, which is that item that I picked up. This quest item here. Rusty Iron Cup of Simple Appearance. Its interior is embossed in lackluster silver and depicts rows of spiral verses, which descend to the bottom. These rhymes speak of pagan beasts and forbidden fruit. The cup is partially filled with tears of atonement harvested by Mayakopa. But father, where are all the idols, paintings, and statues that mother has seized and banned? They were inspired by the faith in our miracle. They should not have been destroyed, for it would have been a grave sin. I don't know, dear son, but I would bet my faith that those underground galleries hide more than air. Uh, do I have the lung? That is actually the actual use of the word lackluster, by the way. Crap. I always come in this room by mistake, and it's because this room doesn't fucking lead anywhere. Because the silver is shiny, it's lustrous. So if it does not have enough shine, it lacks luster. This mea culpa heart I have in is probably like thought of as like the coward heart or the like the get good heart. But damn, it is so useful. All it does is it just makes the parry a little longer. Which means that you block so much more damage. Because the only requirement for the parry is that something hit you. So if you hit it too early, or even a little too late, you're good. I hate this area. I've gotten bodied so much trying to come up this stupid area. All right, come on. Severed hand. Affliction sometimes leaves its mark on mundane objects, unable to reveal the miracle under its mantle of corruption. God damn it. That happened so many times to me. So it's not perfect, you still have to be a little early with it. But it gives you a lot more time to make mistakes. 
Which is good, because as soon as I start recording, I get stressed out. And then I also needed to go to this area. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. How about that, huh? It's, it's hiding behind the pillar. That's not fair. <laughs> Ooh, I'm only missing eight of those. This is a completely new zone. Hi, old boy of S S Serena the pup, the popper. Senex. Senex spent a lifetime playing pain, which caused more and more suffering to his tormented soul. Only when he accepted this pain as a part of his life did he find a meaning. And navicular of Kenny Kahu. Though clumsy. He took advantage of his cheerful and jovial demeanor to trick merchants and clergymen with the intention of killing them and stealing belongings. Oh. Um, ba -ba -ba. This one. Half do not return. Everyone passes. All right. Uh, here I go killing again. Hey, so I messed up the recording. Um, you won't notice it, but there's some editing I have to do in the future, so I'm going to have to kick my own ass, but I've got a thing for this large salty man. Skin and bones, don't you know? At the time of its death, before the journey, the miracle kissed the hand of the master stopping the corruption of the flesh and granting him a new grace. In the name of the High Wills, I bless this relic. Watch over it, for it is now pure and sacred. So this allows you to... Sacred relic in perfect state of conservation. Hand shakes gently when it considers it necessary, secretly articulated by ethereal muscles and tendons. While it's holding it, the bell it's holding warns the wearer of the nearby presence of a mystery. No basking of safe is is safe from the tenacity of the true curious. So it'll make a little noise whenever it sees an item that you're gonna want. And now I've got to get to here and here. All right. I see the path. Um, I didn't mention it at the time because naturally I had no audio. Well, I had audio. I just wasn't using it. But I really enjoy the sequence uh, at the start of the high wall. Is that one? Oh, I think that's one swing now. Yes. That's so good. Oh, man. I see the strings that control the system now. Those spikes are still my demise. Anyway, towards the start of the high wall, there's a thing where you fight the first boss again, and there's two of them, but you're so much stronger that it's not even like a regular, it's not even like a boss fight.
It's the best. I love moments like that. Sometimes they're cheap and dumb. This will drop me into the cistern. Gross. Oh, crap. I also have to make it back without dying. And I've got to cross this long bridge. In case it wasn't clear, though, this is the last episode. Really got to avoid taking chip damage. Yeah, like that. <gasps> yes. I think I can um, use shrines, but I can't teleport. That would be cheating. And then we go up. And into here. Nope. Do not tempt me, luscious door. I'll, I'll use this one since it's relatively close. So I mentioned how in the first episode, uh... Ah, oh, crap. Come on. <laughs> hey, if I'll start. My brother-in-law walked in. He was like, hey, sorry I was screaming. Anyway, I go back to where I was. Actually, wait. There we go. Partially filled. That's what I like to see. Um, now, is there anything else in here? Oh, yeah. So the thing that I learned is... Um, the, the big pointy hat is actually called a caparote, I believe. Caparote. And it's worn during Holy Week in Spain. Uh, it's for Easter. They There's a lot of people in Europe who don't even know what the KKK is. And when they see a big pointy helmet like that, they think Capitote. Or again, Capitote. Uh, I do not know the pronunciation. And I didn't think to Google it for whatever reason. Um, but the little thing around his waist is a little belt. Uh, that is also worn by monks of the type. All right, yeah. I'm going to pause it now. Oh, yeah, also this bridge is apparently based off of a real bridge in Spain. I've got to say, this might be the worst part of the game. Having to cross this gigantic bridge is cool once. Well, it's cool twice. When what's his not shows up... It is a really cool fight because it's like, all right, time to cross that bridge and take my reward of a new area because I just killed a big boss, so I'm not going to kill another big boss, right? It It's exactly where you think that it wouldn't be. And it's also a perfect moment for the game to surprise you. But there's no reason that there wouldn't be a big boss. This is perfectly designed to be a boss arena, so tough titties get good as a boss. Should have. Okay, fine. I can get through here then. Let's make sure that I've got. Not that. I do. <laughs> oh, I love that. So we're just here to pick up another one of the bullheaded fellas. I wonder if anyone's ever cleared the entire world. 
There's the streamer called Lobos Jr. Um, I used to watch him a lot. I have not watched him in years, though. I think he had, like, troubles. Marital troubles. This isn't the place to get into it. Um, what the fuck was I talking about? <laughs> anyway. At one point, he did a, uh, a stream of clearing Lordran. Where he had to kill every single thing in Lordran without dying. Lordran being the World of Dark Souls one. I mean, you would know, assuming you watched my stream of it. I have a whole playlist of Souls-like. Go watch them. Also subscribe, yada yada. Come on. I hate these things, man. Is this the best way to get around your world? This isn't the right way. Of course it's not. I hate these stupid ladders. They are nothing but problems. Their stupid aura mocks me. Like, it just... I mean, I am falling into the trap that the game puts for me. The game is at least partially designed to make you want to jump things, to make you want to try to skip, to go fast. That's why these games are, like, speedrunning crack. Souls games of all types. But you shouldn't do that. You should do what the game doesn't expect you to do. You should go gradual. Play carefully, play smart. But god damn it, I want to play fast. Oh, oh, why not? Why risk it? I've got bile. This might be one of the grossest healing systems in any game also. Uh, Mercy Dreams. And then through there to sleeping canvases. Perfect. Like, the miracle made certain things, f made the, cor the coffins of saints fill up with bile permanently. And like overflow with bile. And that bile is now an infinite resource. Granted, it's destroyed whenever the penitent one uses it, but I feel like there's more bile than can be made, than can be used. Which means that it's a very real threat that the world might one day fill up with saints' bile. Yes, going this way. Thank you. Just goes to show you that the coolest, like, enemy would give you the sickest spell. And or hardest enemy. These guys are now two swings. I love every piece of that. Ah, crap. I've died in this area more times than I really should have. Again, because I was trying to go fast. Get the ladder. I've also heard tell of a secret near here. I'm just gonna ground pound these. All right, maybe it's these. Oh man, those are two swings now. Yes, yes. I really do love how violent the penitent one is. I heard that, like, Vows of Silence, like, 
the penitent one's vows are actually pretty rare. Because, like, if you take a vow of science, how are you supposed to pray, you know? Which makes sense. I'm going to check a wiki one moment. Hey, so I was looking in slightly the wrong area. I did uh, double back and use a thing, but... Hey, we're here. Oh, wow. It's like, it's like an actual area. Pardon me, sir. Am I in your way? Oh, that's so good. Okay. Oh. Just you guys, huh? Pity. What? I'm not sure what happened there. I noticed a weird thing. You might have seen it in an earlier episode where um, I attempted to use my skills after coming out of a one of the bloodstain portals, like the special DLC portals, uh, and I, they just wouldn't work. Like I couldn't swing. I didn't slide when I hit the button. And like you can see me stand next to things and try to slide, and it doesn't come out. Okay, so now we're heading here. Pardon me, sirs. Oh, man. Hmm. There we go. Man, only seven left, huh? Oh, crap. This is going to be a pain in the butt. Because if I get knocked off here, I'll die instantly. I think this is a safe way to go, though. Relative safety. Hey, these are now three instead of four. Also good. Completely filled. Now we just got to get back. All right, that wasn't... That was the hardest thing in the world. I can't believe how hard that was. I'm lucky to be alive. Knock on wood, you know? I think this desk is like polycarbonate or something, but why risk it? Why take a chance? You know? <laughs> Just. That's the thing about superstitions in all, in all cases. Either superstitions do nothing and you're wasting your time, or they do work and you have, and you're only alive because of them. Wait, actually, I can go up for a safer path, yeah. For the path, in fact. And while I'm there, I can also hit that little thing. So yes, I'm aware that this is going to be a long episode, and I, I am, I'm, I'm okay with that. This guy has a cool fight. Um, he's not too different from the uh, the first boss. Uh, but his gimmick, where he grows things in the world, doesn't really come back for a while, which I think is kind of neat. But also, it's a cool gimmick, and I'm a little remiss. Um, he's apparently based off of Jesus in a really weird and roundabout way. Right, this was... Uh, right. But basically... Um, Jesus' whole deal is that he sometimes calls himself the Lamb of God. And I believe there's also a, a line where he says that he's like a vine or something like that. I don't know. I haven't read the Bible in a while. Ah, 
Last time I read it was probably Sunday school. I was just bored and I read the whole thing. Like it was a it was a wacky fun kids Bible, right? But they had the real shit in there. Like they had Old Testament even. Like I remember my sister reading it for the class and getting really disconcerted about all the depictions of God killing babies and dashing them against stones and stuff like that. I was amazed that like the teacher even had a defense. Oh, now would be a bad time to fuck this up. So let's put on, okay, I've got my safety net just in case. Yep. I remember my sister, this is probably the proudest I ever was of her, but she read Exodus, just the title. And she was like, oh, like the level in Halo Reach. I was like, yeah, it is. Shkablaus. Oh, wow. And this opens up. Oh, that's so good. I believe this is the final shrine, but I'm actually missing the sixth one, so, you know. Wrath of the Twisted One. Uh, oh, this is the charge. And then this is the drop attack. Nice. And then I believe that this room is another puzzle room. I forget how to do it though. Let me check the wiki. All right, it says enter and exit from the left. Well, I've forgotten it already. You enter and exit from one side four times and go in from the other side three times. Nope, twice. Because everyone passes, but half don't return. Uh-huh. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's not too bad, actually. Because it's a little unintuitive, but like you see the things go up as soon as you actually do the thing. Nice. Give it to me. A silver grape. Dead fruit converted into a bead in display of clerical vanity. Its cold hardness passes on to its wear, enhancing defenses considerably. That's going on right away. And I don't think it's ever going to come off. All right. Let's put on the nail. Um, now we've got to find another shrine. Which I believe is the last one. I mean, I'll know when I get there because I'll get the achievement. All right. I think it's here. Yep. I think that's it. Take the necks of my deep pain. Yes. I didn't get an achievement though. Should I have? This might be my least favorite ending of the game, by the way. I hate them. Because the Sagittal Martyrs, the dudes who are like completely cut in half and they look super gross, are at least really cool looking. Those are just miscellaneous library bitches. I hate them. All right, I think we're back. Yep. I've been wandering around in here for a little bit. This is now a completely reliable way to kill these fools. Assuming you're not a dummy. You also have to hit them, you see. 
Secret pro tip for fighting in Blasphemous. Hit the enemies with your sword to do damage. Ah, shit. I rested at the Padu and I really shouldn't have. Because now if a room has enemies in it, I don't know if I've been there before. Fuck, I'm stupid. So because I was making memes and doing this LP, I missed the fact that two of my friends got engaged. And like, it wasn't like I had to be there. They got engaged, like, they announced their engagement without me. But like, <laughs> I was late to the text. <laughs> it was like an hour <laughs> late. <laughs> but I had also already sent them a meme. I just hadn't noticed that they had texted me. Like, I'm a smart guy, in my opinion. And I'm pretty smart, so I think I would know. But man, sometimes I can be really unobservant. This game makes me stressed out. Many games of this type do. It's something of an unfortunate... <coughs> Sorry, pardon me. Uh, unfortunate side effect. Because um, the way that they like hide everything everywhere... It stresses me out to know that somewhere there is a health upgrade that I don't have, and I might miss it, and that sucks. And I heard that there's something I need to go and get here, but I do not recall what. I was in here, off camera. This does something, I'm sure. So it turns out that I was in the wrong place. Um, I went around to go get my last bilary flask and to refill them, but the second I walked in, I heard weird sounds, so I decided I would... Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Hey, bro. The Ancient One is exiting my body. It is being born through the rift in my chest from which its visage was peering. Yeah, I see that. One, what must I do? Must I allow the miracle to continue with its punishment? This is grotesque. Hey, bring me the quicksilver before it's too late. Yeah, bro. With this quicksilver, I bless the mixture that will recover your spilled blood. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, crap. Alright, guess we're gonna go level grind. Unfortunate. Here would be a great time when all those things that I spent have come back to bite me. I'll pause it. All right, so I'm back over here. As it happens, I actually need items I don't have from this area, I believe. I hate these things. I despise them, in fact. And unfortunately, I don't have anything that hits up that isn't hilariously cost uh, costly in terms of mana. Yeah, great. Lock me in. How original. Alright. Now we can have a fighting game.
Or maybe we'll just nuke them. Seriously though, these fights have ended up being some of my favorites. I'm not sure how, how I feel about one of the like I mean, really, one of this game's only characters getting turned into, like, a recurring battle. Sought of protection brought into the suffering of its wearer. The grievous lady was wrapped in crimson mantles, a symbol of her link to the flesh of her wards. Cool. <laughs> hey! I skipped this one, too, by mistake. I don't have enough for it. All right, so I've learned something interesting. So that guy respond once. Kind of wish I could just start sinking points into it now, even if I couldn't get it all the way. Damn. Okay, that guy respawned once, but because this thing now boomerangs, uh, I can actually just hit him in the back with it. I throw it past him, and then it swings around and comes back and hits him. Also, I did, in fact, mean to do that. I can't believe I just literally never went out this door. That's a bridge too far to cross. Yep. So because the thing that you can't parry will like throw you out the door, you have to be very careful to not let him throw you out the door. Like that. But yeah, because he blocks to the front, the thing that swings around and hits from the back is totally clear. All right. Let's knock some zeros off of this bitch. Launching projectile causes a sacred explosion at the furthest point. Oh, wow. That's pretty great, actually. Wow. Mia Culpa hath ascended. I think it's at the top now, yeah? Yeah, it's full. I have the strongest sword that it's possible to get. The only way for it to be stronger would be if someone were to, like, go in here, swap that out, put in that. But who would be crazy enough? Oh, come on. That's... Somebody get the ref to call that. That's not fair. <laughs> right. This way. So I guess I also literally never went over here. I love how the pendants in one silhouette looks in this. Oh my god, that's raw. <laughs> I assume those aren't real horses, but it still looks pretty gnarly, bro. Okay, yeah. They're just freakish statues. 
that's a big shortcut. Where is that? That's huge, man. <laughs> oh, and this is the areas that we couldn't get to now. Oh, yes. Here we are. Perfect. Is that the last health upgrade? Yes. It's the one in my hand. You'd think it'd be the one in my chest, but no. Yes. That's a maximum upgrade. Hey, we finally get one for here. Cool, that'll make it easier. And another one of those weird guys on chairs. Oh, that's another mirror for that, or another mask rather, for that one thing. I'm not sure if I have time and uh, spare souls. I know that they are called Tears of Vestiment or Grace or something like that. But they're souls, come on. Um, if I have time, I'll go back and grab Nesimiento's last upgrade. However, I'm really pleased with the amount of heal I have, although I guess now I need a little more because I have more health, but I was pleased with the heal that I had. I guess I can't do that because it'll cost too much health. I was going to see if I could just, like, cut myself. Wow, I can't believe I never went over there. Like I said, really unobservant sometimes. Now let's just complete the run. Those backgrounds in the background. <clears throat> Those churches in the background are very reminiscent of the way that Lothric looks in DS3. Very twisted. And this is post Dark Souls 3, so it's conceivable. Yep. I think I just need to get to... Let's go through here. Oh, for God's sake. Hey, I'm back and safe. My ego's bruised. But that's okay. Eternally inside my mind is Obi-Wan Kenobi saying, Oh, this is going to be easy. Like, I keep jinxing myself. It's my fault, you know? This is a cool way to call for the elevator, and it also makes a lot of sense. Alright. Let's crank it up. Oh, that's the top. Let's put the last movie Jim Henson wanted to make on there. Mirror Mask, look it up. It's a good movie. All right. Uh, we don't need this. Or this. So let's put in my dreams, I hear him speak to me, even though his words have made no sound. 
In dreams, I can see him watch me, even though his eyes are made of silver. Penitent one in sleeplessness. Mm -hmm. Carrying the guilty sword, you have committed the most serious crimes against the mother and her saints, against the miracle and its outbreaks. We have been entrusted with putting an end to your mission. I, Chrysanta in penance, excommunicate you, expel you, execrate you, with the blessing of our miracle of the greatest pain. And thus shall your name be erased under the heavens. Oh boy. Well, we have a boss fight that's just me, but stronger. Oh man. This is... Slow down, a little break. Oh, she parries me too. Jump. Cool. Jump that. She's actually letting me go. Like, she's not just attacking, you know? She has a sense of proportion. So let's reset. Try it from the top. The irritating part about this is that I'm probably going to have to call that elevator every time. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, at the very least, it comes down automatically. Let's party. Penitary, we have our and thus. Jump too early. <laughs> like she has. All of her moves are just better versions of my moves. If I flinch or turn, she attacks. She's in this state. So that means that you can bait it out. Gotta hit the button, though. Oh, she parries that. Oh, but it comes around and hits her, too. <gasps> you can parry fighter. Okay, so you gotta have a good timing. Which means I should shut up and stop trying to talk. Oh great, she does that too. The rapt agony, huh? Oh!
Holy shit, that's a lot of damage. All right, um, I'm gonna turn the game audio up. We're gonna do a couple of things to try to ensure my survival. For one, I'll make my block better. And in a twofold, it'll also improve my defense. I don't think damage is going to be a problem in that fight because uh, that fight appears to be all about just the parry, which does a bunch of bonus damage on its own anyway. So I don't think I'm going to need to worry about doing bonus damage. All right, Kristana, is your name? Penitent one carrying the guilty. We have been in I, Chrysanta in penitent. Chrysanta. Thus... Like Christ and Santa? Bad dodge. Can't parry that. That looks like the way. Oh, she's the wrapped agony, and then she unwraps the sword. Oh my god. She's literally me, but with better moves. She has a stronger stinger. Um... I forgot what move I put on for a second there. <gasps> yes! So we're now getting into sick parry duels like one would have in like a Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Sorry, I blew up my mic. Oh, fuck, that's dope. Three tries. Maybe I'm actually better when I'm talking. Go on! Purge my soul, beaten by the miracle! Bitten or beaten? It says... Oh, man. Oh! <laughs> She got away. Oh my god, she got away. <laughs> Round two's coming up. Custodius Pilgrim. Deambulatory of his holiness. 
god, this is the best. I love this game. This is still my first playthrough, although I looked up a few things just because I'm stupid. Holy shit. In my dreams, I heard your footsteps coming closer. In my dreams, I tried to talk to you and introduce myself. Guardian of the miracle and of the miracle banner, with great pain, I carry the emblem of the Father. I am the hands of bloodied skin. I am the eyes from which your mother gazes at nothing I know of you. Apart from your cold, nameless visage, apart from your calloused and wounded hands, apart from the mourning of your deaths. No, I know nothing of you. Only the miracle knows. Oh, right in. Now may your sword, full of guilt, with mine of gold, collide. Let them hurt and march in procession. I curse you forever in name. I bless you forever in death. That's cool. Oh, right in. So Soul's bosses, final bosses, usually go one of two ways. Usually they're like a victory lap. And sometimes they're like a final exam. This one doesn't appear to be too hard. Oh, meteors, oh no. I don't even do that much damage. Yeah, alright. Actually, you know what? No, this is too easy. Now I'm suspecting a swerve. Gotta survive. You have shattered the mirror in which you saw me asleep. Now you must fight my now new stronger form. Now you see me as the son of the true oh, no. miracle. Oh yeah. Let's boogie. <laughs> oh yeah. That. Guessing we need to hit his big face. I played Bloodstain, I know. This is a lot like a, a Bloodstain fight, actually. A couple of the fights in Bloodstain. Specifically the final boss of Bloodstain, uh, Ritual of the No, not Ritual of the Night. Um, Bloodstain Curse of the Moon 1. Which I actually played earlier this year. There we go. Keep the stuff on. Oh boy. Yeah, because I was like, man, that was a way lamer boss compared to Krasanta. Well, here we go. That's probably the time to swing, right? Yeah, that does it. Okay, that's all right. I just wanted to see how far we could get. Because what I actually want to do is go back to Nacimiento. And help him birth that old man out of his chest. That legitimately might be the most grotesque thing in this game. And that's saying a lot. Apparently that was added in one of the DLCs. Like, that's not default in the game. The only thing I'm missing is six of the little, um, putos, the little cherub babies. Um, I know where one is. It's right above...
Oh crap, this is the wrong way. Alright, alright. Go in here and then we're heading up. Easier said than done. I love the way that penitent one sword sticks into the wall. I love the little clank that it makes. Here we go. Right, that wasn't too bad. Not at all. Albero. Oh yes, I'm also missing um, a few of the bones. But as for everything else, I think I have nearly all of them. So, uh, because this is going up in September, as it happens, this will be the uh, last video you see before Halloween starts. Let's crank it. Nice. With this quicksilver, I bless the mixture that will recover your spilled blood. sake leave me alone there is no need to think about what is about to happen <laughs> oh god this is grotesque I just noticed that his feet are nailed to a board you see that it doesn't look like he minds That might be the most gnarly thing in this game. And this is a game full of gnarly imagery. I want to check on the salty boy. And then we'll get right back to the boss fight. I'm not sure how long this episode's gonna be, but it's at least gonna be an hour. But all of them have been an hour, so. Oh, he's still, cool. I guess that means he's either lost the ability to speak or he's dead. Able to pass on, you know? For whatever reason, I feel like that walk to him was also faster. So we've got all the bile upgrades, we've got all the flasks, we have all the health upgrades, all the mana upgrades. I don't think we're missing anything besides the bones and the babies. Just a few uh, collectibles in the grand scheme of things. I really like that this, um... I really like how few collectibles there actually are in this game. My wife, bless her dearly, bought me, uh, well, she bought a Switch for the house, and we've been using it a lot. The Switch is a good console. Um, but uh, she also got me a copy of Breath of the Wild, and I I can't play that game, man. It's too big. Like, I, I don't have it in me to give a shit about 900 Korok seeds. I think that game might be too big. Um... To be perfectly frank. I've discussed this in a few other videos, but I think Breath of the Wild has too big of an overworld. Because you spend so much of the game walking. And like... I don't know. On the one hand, that's because it's a new direction for Zelda. But 
I'm not sure if it's completely clean. My guardian, I am the hat. Nothing apart from you. No. All right. So we've got to survive this fight without taking any damage. Or almost no damage. He's doing like jutsus. Do you see that? He's doing hand signs. There we go. Just two big combos and that's it. You have now you see me. Alright, so out of the true miracle. Sorry, I just bumped the microphone into my face. We'll turn to adjust it. Ugh. So this is physically a separate place. That jeweled sword with an eye in it is a pretty good look, I'll be honest. Got big swings, too. Man, hand is rosary. So, what a relic is in the real world. A relic is just the term used for the body of a saint. Crap. I'm trying to capitalize, but I don't know the fight. That's the actual literal definition of a relic. Oh, you can hit those too. Last out of the mirror. So it looks like the penitent one's whole deal is just trying to shut this fucking theocracy down. I always try to dash through lightning and it never works out for me. Oh, you can parry these by hitting them. Or just deflect them. It's not a perfect fight, I'll be honest. But, like, after Chrysanta, like, this is a super cool fight. I almost feel bad that I didn't take, like, too many tries on Chrysanta, because, like, shit, that is a cool enemy. Oh, god, not again. The annoying thing is that it's just a boss fight where, like, you kind of have to just hope that you can do a lot of damage to it. Assuming I'm reading all these signals, right? Which is not a guarantee. Okay, that's no reason I won't succeed. These make the same clanging noise. So maybe they're both, like, doing the same effect to, like, try to open the thing. Open his little mask.
Oh, jeez. All right, all right. Sorry I made fun of your fireballs, bro. They are significantly more formidable now, I assure you. You needn't worry. I think you're plenty scary, last out of the miracle. Man, I can't wait to try to give someone a TLDR in this game. Yeah, so basically the Catholics were all crazy, like end of the world shit. Yeah, they were right. Um, and uh, you play as a, a Catholic monk with a sword and you try to defeat Catholicism. And also there's a guy who gives birth to his chest. Oh, he's doing all the damage types, of course. Nice. I felt confident in taking that. Oh my god! That was gnarly. Phase three, huh? Just got an achievement called Sumna Blasphema. Yep, Sumna Blasphemia. Is that the sum of blasphemous? Sum of blasphemy? Right, um, I'm out of flasks. Oh, cool. I'll turn the game audio up. You have freed his holiness from his afflicted torment. And now he walks by the old processions on the other side of the dream. Is he itching his nuts? The cradle of the grievous miracle. The final relic. The grail of blood and gold that emanated from the forehead of the father as he silently lamented the moment of his blessed twisting. That first relic is here at the top of the Ashen Mountain, next to the Turin Throne, where His Holiness was kissed by a miraculous pain. And now, your final communion with the miracle awaits. Only you will be able to know how much of it has seeped into your guilty heart. What does that mean? Your communion All right. Big chair. Path of the Believer. Achievement unlocked. Put the sword whack where it goes. Oh, they're praying to me. That isn't exactly what I wanted. Oh, fuck. Of course. The penitent one took a vow of silence, so he couldn't say, hey, stop your whole weird martyrdom culture and fetishization of priests and all the idolatry. Quit it. He couldn't say it because of his vow of silence. So no one knew to not pray to him when he died and sacrificed himself for your sins. And thus came the moment of final communion with the sword born of guilt. A last sacrifice in order to finish penance and break off with the ungodly will of the grievous miracle. The plans of the miracle are capricious. 
penance never ends, but changes, hurts, and condemns at will. There is no place for the penitent one on the other side of the dream. His place is here among us. He is the new father and the last son of the miracle. Recipient of our prayers forever and ever. This sucks. Oops, sorry. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> That's, that's so cool. Enrique Caveza, Raul Vivar, Andre Omari Goguia, Oscar Mandones, Ignacio Caratero, Paula Garrido, Ekaterina Rudinok, Enrique Caveza, Juan Miguel Lopez, Jesus Nerquin Campos, Enrique Culinet, Mikhail Ortega, Andres Rodero, Victor Vec Cerezo, Francisco Urena, Jose Arias, Santiago Garcia, David Erosa, Enrique Cabeza again, Michael Ortega again, Mauricio Garcia, Fran Berrera, Raquel Alcazar, Alcazar, Carlos Viola, Carlos Viola for sound design and music. Excellent. And Danny Parejo. I assume that Danny was the bag of meat that Carlos had to hit to get the noise out. Vocal Foley. Anna David Miguel. Vocal arrangement, Nadia Torres. Diego Emerge was the Foley coordinator. The instruments were Manuel Soto, Noli Soto, Sergio Carmona, and Joaquin Eligio. David Martinez. Uh, Persa voice, Omuk and Moliner. Megan Clark and Enrique Colene. Nico Quiles. Andre Rodero. Jed Milton. Adan Latonda. Salvi Garrido. Oh, fuck. This was a really good game. <laughs> it's so well made. It's so pretty while also being just so gruesome. That guy's name is just called Golden Face. Chris Nelson knocked it out of the park. That's Nascimento. Miriam Rosalie Craig. I don't know if that's her returning voice actress. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I actually bought two copies of this game. One for me and one for my friend. Uh, this is a really, really good game. This might be the second best two-dimensional Metroidvania Souls-like platformer. Sorry, but Hollow Knight is really good, y'all. Maybe I'll play Hollow Knight again and give it another give it another look around. Maybe this is better, you know? Oh, man. Wow. I probably could have done that without the health upgrade. Actually, the health upgrade was probably what saved me in the last fight since I didn't heal and I had run out of healing. As I've mentioned, I often sit through the credits the whole way through in Let's Plays, but if this is your first one I'm watch you're watching, uh, I usually sit through the credits of the Let's Plays because these people did hard work, they deserve it, and I usually have things to say to wrap up during credits. However, I've been recently worried. Uh, I've recorded this in advance, far in advance, much further than I do for most of my LPs. But I was worried that I wouldn't have very much interesting to say because I realized how uh, some of my LPs are so... Like, I just... Pterodax, huh? Like, some of my LPs essentially just turn into podcasts with shooters in front of them. Majestic is extended. By E.B. Sompex. Microsoft Jing Hei. By Monotype Imaging. Team 17, shout out. They're really stepping it up with a publishing side. 
I love that Team 17's like accolades and awards are like worms for being a fun, cartoony family shooter. Overcooked for being family friendly and for being a fun game where you and your friends cook some food. And Blasphemous, a game where you play as a abomination killing... What the fuck is this game about, man? I really like how they describe the penitent one's hands as cracked. They've done that a few times. And it makes sense considering he's holding a sword that is not ergonomic to grip. And in fact does explicitly hurt him because of the thorn in its uh, in the hilt. That thorn you can upgrade through doing those little challenge rooms where you break the statues that restore your guilt. Or I guess alleviate you of guilt. <clears throat> Sorry, I haven't really recorded uh, with voice for a while. I did all of Blasphemous inside of one week. Um, and I haven't really recorded much of anything else. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll put it up like on my normal schedule. But then I was like, oh shit, wait. Halloween's coming up. So I gotta rush it all out. So all of this just filled the last week of September. And... I guess I'll find the additional QA by Y test. Or YT test. Like IT. <laughs> Joe Hammer, shout out. Vicky Freeman. Debbie Best. Um But yeah, so I I'm having a weird thing where, like, I'm going to have to hope that I my LPs don't, like, leave any weird gaps in the schedule. But, yeah, um, Blasphemous. It's a really good game. I recommend you play it. It's really hard. Um, I'm going to do at least one more playthrough. I wonder what ending I got. I know that this game has good endings and bad endings, but I don't know which one that was. I don't know what the endings look like. Um, I read a little... Sometimes in walkthroughs, I just read the entire game, and I'm like, okay, so coming up, there's going to be a plot twist where I have to kill this guy, even though he was my friend. Um, but in this one, I just looked up as far as I would need and try to avoid anything else. Fellow indie developers from supporting us right from the start. Paula Fingerspit Ruiz, huh? Louis Olivion. But yeah, um, it's a really cool game. I know very few um, Spanish development studios, which is nice. Um, it's nice to see that diversity. Because like this is a game so steeped in a very specific view of Catholicism and specifically Spanish Catholicism. Um. And like it draw, this is a game that I feel like is cooler for knowing the real world more about it and what all of this is based off of. Uh, I was going to mention this earlier, but they actually named all of the bones in this game, all the relics. All of those are uh, Kickstarter backers who put a high enough donation goal, which is why some of the names are just plain weird. Because, you know, some of them are like, you know, Hyoid Bone of Guadalupe. And it's like, oh, that's a, you know, that's a Spanish sounding name. More than 10,000 backers. Oh, are these the big spenders? Andrew C. Hunt. Or Chunt, for short. Devin Patrick Williams. Ah. Ha, 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 ha. Hunter Blaze Darton wanted to be depicted with Tracer's hair and goggles uh, and also naked. This guy wanted a tentacle coming out of his mouth. Joel Sona. And his brother Purr. And their other brother Fur. Michael Wolberg, TFK. Guy looks like such a loser. <laughs> Liam Brady. I bet he watches football. Oh, this guy looks fun. I like his hat. Ooh, and he's got a fun shirt, too. Issa Kabir or Issa. I'm not sure. 
Oh, then these are all the Kickstarter backers who... A Zenny saved. I like that name. Aaron Boyband Champion. Did that guy just say that his name is Aaron so he would be very high up in the credits? Because I feel like his name also isn't Boyband Champion. Because the name about El Friedrich is that um, with the spelling, it's relatively high in alphabetical orders. Because for so long, um, I was always at the end of things because they went alphabetically by last name. And my last name is close to the end of the alphabet. So I was like, I, when, when, I, when I was like picking out my new stuff, you know, the new spelling of my name and everything, I was like, A-E. I'm going to be right near the start. And it's near the start, so you're still reading it and your eyes haven't glazed over. But it also has a unique spelling, so when you see El Friedrich, you're like, what the fuck? Uh, apparently this game got over 600% of its original goal. Uh, something like, I think it was near 666, which is just too good for words, honestly. Putting the really big backers as um, f uh, photos in the credits is pretty good. I was thinking, I wonder if they ever patched Mighty Number no. 9. When Mighty Number no. 9 came out, Mighty Number no. 9 was also a big Kickstarter game, but it didn't fare as well for a lot of reasons. Antonio Diaz Leonidas. Antonio the Wanderer. A lot of Antonios and Anthony's. A couple of angels. Angel. Wow, a lot of angels. There's an Angel Martin and an Angel Martinez. Shout out to Azure Sky for being at the very end. Ooh, Astral Paladin. That's a good name. As within the K. BV. Vakos. Vakodin. Vakyongo. I think that's a, either a Vietnamese or a Korean name. Bill Platt, Bill Pew, and Billy Heath. Brandon Minced Meat Minster. That's a really good name. <laughs> Brandon Batista. Yeah, Mighty Number no. 9, Kickstarter game. Um, when it came out, all the names in the credits were they included all their Kickstarter backers, you know, much like this is doing. But for whatever reason, I guess the Kickstarter names were given the same length of time on screen as all the development names. Which, so the credits were like four hours long or something. And I wonder if they ever patched that. Carlos Romero and Carlos Romero. Okay, I'm going to skip it because we're only on the C's and I've just realized that this chunk of the recording has hit an hour. Sorry, rest of the Kickstarter names. It's like, man, imagine if these credits were four hours. Wouldn't that be wild? And I look at the recording and it's one hour. Shall your name be erased under the heavens. What? Because she's not dead. She took it. You know, taking that sword is a form of black. Oh! <laughs> oh, that's radical. That's dope. True apostasy. Oh! <laughs> a new game mode has been unlocked. For sorrow of the brother. What is this? Uh huh. Is this the bloody palace? Oh, it's time attack.
That makes sense. Oh, we're still going. Get in there. Rush down, you know? Man, Penitent won in Smash when? Wow. So, uh, that's Blasphemous, everyone. Oh. Fantastic game. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Uh, I highly recommend everyone play this. Um, sorry for the long video, but damn, I wanted to get all of this out. And uh, hey, I hope everyone had a good year up until Halloween, and I hope that you have a good Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. Um, but yeah, I have been Alfred. This has been Blasphemous. Everyone should buy this game, or at the very least, follow the developers so they can see what other cool shit they're going to work on. Uh, have a good day. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.